My name is Dr Nila Nakvi. I'm a paediatric cardiologist which means I'm a children's heart specialist consultant doctor and I work at a central London teaching hospital for the NHS. I've worked in the NHS for the last 25 years and I absolutely love it. I know I've got the very best job and I'm going to try and persuade all of you to think of it. Uh, my job is very hands-on. I look after approximately 1,200 children. So I look after babies, often from the day they're born. Sometimes they're diagnosed with a heart problem when they're in their mommy's tummy. Sometimes they present in shock on the first day or two of life and get rushed in an ambulance to a hospital over a large area. And because my job is very specialist, children from 23 different hospitals would then come and see me and my team. Uh, so my job involves looking after children from when the day they're born until they're 16 years old and it's usually when people go into sixth form uh, or when they start working that they leave paediatric care. So I look after children when they're very sick, when they're in the hospital. I also get to go to the operating theatre. Uh, I look after them when they're better and they need monitoring and I'm seeing the, them in the outpatient clinic. I look after them in my hospital and one of the things that's so interesting about my job is I get to go to different places as well. So I cover 23 different hospitals. So that's one of the reasons I was saying my job's never boring because I get to go to the operating theatre, I go to the intensive care, I go to the clinic, I go to different hospitals. One of the good things about doing a specialist uh, subject in medicine is that you often get to travel a lot and I get to go to really interesting places to conferences all over the world sometimes I'm presenting my research sometimes I'm just learning from other people uh, the key skills required really are to be willing to work hard to be have a very high level of integrity to be really honest um, to be able to put other people ahead of yourself and to be a team player. A lot of medicine really, uh, by medicine I mean medicine and surgery and all the specialities, a lot of it involves working in teams a lot of the time. Those are the main things really. The hardest thing really in the journey for medicine is actually getting in. I'm sure you all know that you've got to score highly in your A-levels. They mainly look at your A-levels rather than your GCSE, so it's your A-level predictions, but it's mainly people who are doing relatively well. You certainly don't have to be the top in your school, you don't have to be the most uh, geeky uh, scientific person at all, but you do need to get a certain number of grades. And most people look for three sciences or math. So it's mainly biology, physics, chemistry, and maths in a different combination. Uh, but some places will allow you to do biology and chemistry. It depends which one they require with other subjects. So that's if you go in straight away after your A-levels. But you can also go in as a mature student if you've done another scientific degree first. And there's now an increasing number of medical schools in the UK which take uh, graduate students. Obviously that's a little bit more expensive because then you're doing your second degree. Uh, but people still do that and often those students who do that do extremely well. They're very motivated and obviously they find the studying a bit easier because they're older and more mature and they're a little bit ahead because they've done the biomedical science degree first. So I went straight in after my A-levels. I did biology, physics, chemistry and I applied to a variety of medical schools around the UK. I chose ones with higher grades and I had places with backup and the um, interview process wasn't as scary as people think. They may have also do interviews occasionally as well and it's mainly they're just checking that you are somebody who's got reasonable social skills and are friendly. They're also looking for some kind of work experience and they're usually looking to see that you've done some kind of voluntary work. So it's just a tick box exercise. I uh, went to an old people's home 
and I spoke to some old people and to be honest I didn't enjoy it that much but I just did it because I knew I needed to do it and then I managed to get some voluntary work in the hospital they were quite mean to me actually they made me go to an all men's ward and they made me pick up the urinals I don't know if you know what they are but they're like pots that all men wee in and they were just having a good a lot of fun giving me the worst job but actually it wasn't too bad and then all oh, the old oh, men they were quite sweet and they gave me money to go to the shop to buy them sweets and crossword books and I got to tick the box and then I got into medical school so it was worth it. If you're thinking about doing medicine then unfortunately as I said, the hardest thing is getting in. So prior to your A-levels, there's two types of exams you are likely to need to do. So all, nearly all the medical schools ask you to do an exam called a UK CAT. Uh, that's required by all the medical schools in the country apart from Oxford, Cambridge, Leeds, UCL and Imperial. And they do a separate exam. They have their own one called the BMAT. So the UK CAT is a computerised test and you do it at a driving test type place and it's usually done in the summer of year 12 and it consists of verbal reasoning, situational judgement, decision making and quantitative reasoning. If you're going to one of the other medical schools or to try and broaden your chance of getting in, you'd also would probably want to be considering doing the BMAT as well. So the BMAT is done in the October half term or you can actually do it in September so that then you've got your results by the time you're applying to medical school. The BMAT consists of three parts. The first part is a clinical aptitude test, which is a bit like an intelligence test. It consists of maths-based reasoning and verbal reasoning under time pressure. The second part is a scientific aptitude test and at the moment that has usually 27 questions which are biology, physics or chemistry. But bearing in mind you are studying these anyway for your A-levels. Uh, the third part is an essay and they'll give you three essay titles uh, which you haven't seen before and you get to choose one. And an, an example would be Aging is a Disease Process Discuss. Uh, there are ways to prepare for this and everybody does prepare for them for sure. So you can get a subscription online to Medify, M-E-D-I-F-Y. You can also see uh, videos on YouTube, there's books you can buy, there's questions online, there also might be some school-based workshops you can go to to prepare for the exam. So the UK CAT score is usually somewhere between 400 and 800 and the BMAT score is scored between 1 and 9. The actual score you're going to need to get in depends on how well the people in the year you're doing uh, score, so it, it varies every year. And then after that you're going to go and do your A-levels and most people are asking for three A's. Some people ask for one or two A-stars as well. Um, so just push yourself as much as you can, even if you're not sure, just have a go. If you're going to do medicine, you you have to go to university. It's not there's other things which are similar to medicine that are not medicine that you can get into if you're an allied healthcare professional that you might be able to get through with an apprenticeship. But for medicine, uh, you have to go to some kind of medical school. Most of them are attached to universities. Some are standalone medical schools. Training at medical school takes most people five years. Some people take an extra year because they do an intercalated BSc as well. Then they have another degree as well and they often do that to give them the edge if they want to go to what, into one of the more competitive specialities which are uh, in the some of the hospital medicine things are very competitive because people like to do them. When you're applying for medical school and also when you're applying for jobs, it's taken as a given that you're reasonably clever and that you've got good grades because you wouldn't be there otherwise. So don't focus so much on that as the sole thing because they will expect that anyway. Uh, as I said, you don't have to be the cleverest person in your school by any means, but you're usually going to be in the top tier-ish. But you don't have to be in the top set for maths or anything, don't let that put you off. Uh, lots of doctors were not in the top set. Um, then um, the things they're looking for, obviously they look for voluntary service and some kind of 
work experience in that hospital or GP type environment but they're also looking for other things that make you a more interesting person and that's important to come out in your personal statement so anything that you've done that's outside medicine so anything sporty or any groups that you're in if you've entered any competitions even if you haven't won if you've entered different competitions anything to show that you're more interesting and that you're not just a bookworm and if you are a bookworm just quickly get some interest Most junior doctors start on a salary in 2019 of around 23,500, which I have to say is not that much for the amount you've studied and you're older and you have debt and we're aware of that, but gradually it increases. And being a junior doctor, it can last a variable amount of time depending on what you do. If you become a GP, you're not a junior doctor for that long, but if you do something very specialist like I did, you might be a junior doctor when you're 40 years old and you're still a junior doctor. So the junior doctor salary goes up to 65,000, and then most GPs are earning an average of around 103,000, although some of them can supplement their income a lot, lot more, uh, depending on how they're running their surgery. Um, hospital consultants are earning between 74,000 and about 104,000 on the NHS. And then they may do private work as well, or there's other bonuses that can get over as the years pass by. Certainly, if you're going to do medicine, uh, as I've mentioned before, Money is important and you will have enough money and you will have a good life, but you won't be loaded like a banker. And if money is your driver, then maybe that's something you should think of. Because certainly I think that if you're doing medicine, it means you are clever and you could really do anything. And there are other jobs that you would earn more money in if you were, say, a banker or if you were a lawyer. But I can tell you I know lots of bankers and lawyers and none of them love their job like doctors. Ours is much more interesting and you're doing a service to humanity, you're going to have a legacy that you're going to be really proud of when you're on your deathbed and these are things to think about as well. I know it's hard when you're only a teenager to think of that long ahead but uh, when you're thinking of your job, try and think about what you're going to be doing in the long term. I think lots of people make the mistake that they look at junior doctors who are very young and how they're having a harder time, how they're still doing exams after they qualify and they think oh maybe that's not what I want to do but what you have to remember is you're not a junior doctor for your whole career but you will be a GP or a consultant if you become a doctor for decades and that's what you need to be thinking of. It's the long-term goal and the light at the end of the tunnel is fantastic. I enjoy everything about my job. The one thing that I really hated, which I haven't been asked, is I hate studying. I hate doing exams. I get really stressed. Uh, so if you're that kind of person, don't let it put you off because that's just a brief time and you can still get through it. So the things that I enjoy in my job, I enjoy the fact that there's lots of variety. I enjoy the fact that I'm never in the same place, that I go to the operating theatre, that I go to the clinic. I enjoy the fact that in my job I do a lot of skills with my hands, so it's not just a thinking job. I do ultrasound scans, like heart scans, which are called echocardiograms, to diagnose all types of problems that children can have with their heart. So I quite like that because I'm a bit of a practical person as well. And then I also really like people and I'm quite nosy so my job is quite good for me because I get I have about 1200 patients I've met all of them for years I follow them and I get to see them growing up and then I also know their mums and their dads and their grandmas and their grandpas and they've all got really interesting lives so it's almost like you're kind of involved in watching a really interesting drama on TV but of loads of different families going on all the time and I don't know if any of you watch that program Casualty or you watch the American medical programs what I'd say is medicine is like 30 times better than that and more interesting than that. Um, in my training, if I think about things I've enjoyed, I've really enjoyed uh, being there when babies are born. That's really exciting. I've really enjoyed going, when I was young, I used to get really excited in the night going in ambulances. I just used to really find that fun. Um, going to hospitals to rescue sick babies there. 
uh, now a bit older I'm not sure that I like that but there's all different types of my job I've enjoyed and what you'll find is as you grow older different areas of the job you find interesting and you'll do different things I've done about 18 different jobs so I've worked in so many different places and that's interesting as well I've worked in Birmingham Children's Hospital, I worked at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, I've worked all around London, I've worked on the coast as well, so you get to work in different places as well. And it, But if you don't want to and you don't want to travel and you're more like a home person, that's okay because you can get a rotation in a smaller area and you don't have to keep travelling around. My parents are both doctors and that hasn't put me off. My husband's a doctor. My whole family have got about 150 years service to the NHS and the reason we're all doing it is because it's just such a fantastic organisation to work for. When you see the newspapers and TV and social media it's always the negative stories that tend to come but actually working in it it's just brilliant you get to work with all the best people because all the nicest kindest most fun people tend to work in some organizations like the nhs and every day is interesting it's never ever boring that's one thing i could tell you about my job it's never boring <laughs>